another week boys and another twab this week in destiny late as hell sorry guys i know you're probably thinking right now cross you be slacking it was thursday yesterday i have good reasons but more on that for another time this week in destiny though we are a little over two weeks away from the launch of the final shape from the witness to the dread to prismatic to exotic class items and more there are so many things to be excited about and today we have even more to share with you including some system updates and reworks that will also happen at launch so without further Further ado, let's get into it. Topics for this week include weapons tuning recap, build your arsenal shorts, enhanced perk updates, momentum changes, reduced fragment costs at Akura in the final shape, new boss profile for the Pantheon, zero hour exotic mission is live, meta web webcomic feature, and the Destiny 2 content vault updates. Ooh. All right, guys, let's start with weapons tuning recap. Yesterday, we shared details about our plans for weapons tuning in the final shape. This includes a change to some weapon mod specs, weapon balancing, and perk updates. For more details, check out our Dev Inside Weapon Tuning Preview blog. Guys, we covered all of it yesterday. I do need to emphasize though, deprecating spec mods and just building that damage into the weapons, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, when you think about it, I'm probably just gonna run back a mag on literally everything, which is a huge net positive. With that being said though, there was a lot of nerfs. Feel free to check out our blog post breakdown. Let's continue though, build your arsenal. As the excitement for the fighter shape is ramping up, we're sharing a first look at some of the exotic weapons and armor you can expect to see check them out and start cooking up those builds now guys we're gonna watch this live with you guys here on saturday when i get back but let me just say they look juicy microcosm phenomenal looking trace rifle here man and look i'm not even that crazy about trace rifles but this one looks like it puts out just saying we even got kvostov here an old classic and it has like this ricochet effect there was a number of exotics that were also shown off that we watched the other day again we'll have a moment this weekend where we're gonna go through and watch all of this so if you want to join us come by our twitch now enhancement in the final shape during the life all year players have got a taste of weapon enhancement with the rate of dead weapons from root of nightmares and crota zen in the final shape you'll see that this system has undergone some upgrades making enhancing your weapons easier and allowing us to comfortably expand this system to include more weapons here's a quick recap on how weapon enhancement will work alongside some of the changes so weapon enhancement allows the weapon to be upgraded to receive enhanced traits a weapon level and a memento socket now to upgrade your weapon players can navigate to the inspection screen and insert the enhancement tier mod for standard currencies rated dead weapons will continue to use spools of conquest so look at this guys it's showing the tier one enhancement just like we see with our rated depths now enhancement tier one replaces your mass work and provides the weapon with an enhanced intrinsic that matches the stat of your old mass work it also provides a weapon level a date when you first enhance the weapon and a memento socket Sockets. Now, rate adepts only since these weapons have a base crafted version. We wanted the adept version to feel like a meaningful upgrade. Therefore, these weapons can visit the relic on Mars to adjust their first two columns, typically barrels and magazines, in a similar fashion to how crafted weapons can augment these perk columns. Now, that's huge, guys. Again, nothing sucks worse than getting those final traits and it'd be that perfect roll, except your barrel or your mag option is garbage. Now, you're going to be able to go in there with your rate adepts and change those things now enhancement tier 2 this is weapon level 11 requirements once the player inserts this mod the left column traits will automatically be upgraded to their enhanced perk if you have multiple perks this will update all traits in the column players will not need to visit the relic on mars to update these traits anymore now enhancement tier 3 weapon level 17 requirements once the player applies this mod the right column weapon trait perk will automatically be updated to be enhanced like the left column this will upgrade all of the traits present and does not require visiting the relic look at that fellas hot damn it that is beautiful your shining god roll whatever it may be all four perks enhance now we've heard the feedback that weapons should have more avenues to acquire enhanced traits in the final shape all new weapons will either be craftable or have access to weapon enhancement in addition weapons that remain active drops in the following activities will be eligible for enhancement oh We've got Bow the Disciple Raid Adepts, Guardian Game Weapons, so things like Taraxippus, Hula Baloo, King's Fall Raid Adepts, Gambit, Competitive Crucible, all of them. Oh my god, what? you telling me I can have Rose with enhanced perks? Trials of Osiris, Crucible, Iron Banner, Vanguard Ops, Nightfalls, and Prophecy Dungeon. Now look at this notation here. This will include older instances of these weapons, as long as they have an origin trait. Now unfortunately, due to some technical constraints, there are a handful of weapon instances from before season 17 that have origin traits and are active drops 
but they will not be eligible for weapon enhancements. If a weapon is not actively dropping in these activities and playlists, or it's under the legacy focusing options, it will not be enhanceable when the final shape releases. If weapons are reissued and become part of a playlist active drops once again, we'll update older versions that have origin traits to enter weapon enhancements. Guys, this is a huge win. I mean, we already knew that there were going to be a lot of weapons being added to this list of enhanceable traits, but Bungie just went ahead and added a ton more. And listen, what this really puts on the table now, at least for me, is that adepts, especially from raids, they're worth it. Like, I'm about to get out there and start grinding for them. A lot of you are probably doing Pantheon, and you're getting King's Fall raid weapons and even Bound the Disciple raid adepts that are dropping. And if you have that good 5 out of 5 roll, keep it, fellas. You will be able to enhance it in the final shape. Now, mementos in the final shape. We've received a lot of feedback on weapon mementos, especially as new mementos have released in our seasonal events. In the final shape, we have a few changes coming that impact how you store mementos and apply them to your weapons. To craft it and enhance weapons, we'll no longer need to visit the Relic on Mars to apply mementos. Players can apply the mementos of their choosing directly in the weapon inspection screen. So essentially, like a shader. Now, memento stack cap limits will be raised from 1 to 3. Mementos will no longer be stored alongside the player's consumables. When the final shape launches, your mementos under consumables will show as faded. Then once the faded memento is dismantled, you'll see plus one memento added in the weapon inspection screen as a virtual currency. For players who figured out how to get around the original memento stack size limits, this will allow you to dismantle all those mementos safely, even if you temporarily go over the intended stack limit of three. If you're holding three or more of a particular memento, it will not drop until you spin your mementos to be under the stack size limit of three. As big guys, the main takeaway from this is that this raises the cap, more opportunities for us to apply mementos elsewhere, which let's just be real, the drip on your weapons is very much part of the end game, just like the drip on your characters, even if my warlocks always look ugly. Ah! Now reduce fragment costs at Ikora in the final shape, Subclass fragments purchasable from Icor are expensive, particularly considering how many there are, especially for new lights. In the final shape, we have reduced the cost of fragments from 25,000 glimmer to 10,000 glimmer. Our goal here is to make these vital build crafting elements more accessible for new and returning players. All right. Yeah, we did an entire guide for anyone out there that might be a new player. Let me just say, if you are a new player, or maybe you're just considering dabbling in Destiny, never in the history of Destiny has it been a better time to jump in. You get these subclass kits. Hits, you get exotics, especially if you do the right quests, and you get a ton of free content and gear that's maxed out on level. Literally the best time ever. Now the Pantheon grows stronger. Another week and your task has become more difficult, Guardians. Rolk, Disciple of the Witness, has joined the Pantheon and we've gathered intel for your mission. Vanguard Guardian Dispatch, All Points Bulletin. Defenders of the City, you are tasked with the elimination of the following targets. Rolk, Disciple of the Witness. Classification, the last known Lubrian. First Disciple of the Witness. Other names include the Upender and Worm Father. Dude, what a dope name, right? The Upender. Uh, he's also Dread and Resonant. Hazards, Darkness Mastery, Immeasurable Strength and Durability, Powerful Lubre's Ruins the Glaive, and Sons of Lubre Attack and Debuff, Savage Strike Kick, Umbral Suffocation Attack, Teleportation, Resonant Spike Area Effect, and Guardians rated Sigma 3 or lower are advised not to engage. Also has the sexiest legs in the solar system. Intel, Rogue was born on the planet Lubre. A ruled originally blessed by the traveler that spiraled into an authoritarian regime when the traveler left. Fueled by rage, Rogue sought to destroy the regime, but his bloodlust led to being ostracized from his clan. Eventually, afraid of what he'd become, his clan attempted to kill him. The cryptic records from the pyramid indicates that the witness made contact with Rogue during this time, restored him, and empowered him as the first disciple. Rogue took his vengeance on Lubre, annihilating its parent star and destroying the planet. Vanguard power assessments place Rogue far above any previous enemy faced by any guardian. Battle Scholars theorized the bold fire team that stormed the Sucket Pyramid only prevailed due to Rogue's humoring a fight to begin with, but prevailed they did. Yeah, you literally see it in the fight, guys, like Rogue's not taking it that seriously, and it's not until like final stand where he's like, oh crap, we gotta go in now. Now, up notes, hidden cipher sequences buried in the symbols throughout have been decrypted by a pioneering cryptarch thanks to countless fire teams keeping the way clear. The solved sequence is believed to be astronomical coordinates to Lubre, probe dispatch awaiting arrival. Dude, can you imagine? 
imagine if like in a future expansion, we go to Lubre. Now the creation of the hive was majorly influenced by Rook. The first design of the witness subjugated the worm mother Zeta and forced her spawn into union with the krill, which led to the hive species and the hive gods themselves. Yeah, guys, if you don't know lore on Rook, let me just say my man was bad. I mean, bad, bad. Badder than anything we've ever faced. And somehow the witness is stronger than Rook. Now, Crypt Darks have uncovered sex in between Rook and Savathun, which Savathun derides Rook's simplicity as a tactician. Oh, that's hot. According to the Witch Queen, the first disciple only values strength, and his downfall will be his brute force approach to every situation. You know, I always felt like Rook and I connected, you know? Why learn a mechanic when you could just brute force it? Am I right? No lie, guys. Definitely check out some lore on Rook. It's fantastic. Now, Zero Hour Exotic Mission is live. If you haven't jumped in yet, you can find it in the Into the Line note of the director. Completing the mission in the required time frame will earn you the Outbreak Perfected Exotic Pulse Rifle. As we mentioned, last week we're celebrating the release by asking you to share your favorite moments with trevor post your favorite art screenshots videos or memes anything that shows your love for our favorite overly attached robot just use the hashtag my friend trevor we'll be giving our favorites an art or movie of the week emblem and sharing your creations in a future twit guys we got an entire guide on it if you want to check it out one thing we didn't mention in that guide we thought the final puzzle in that exotic mission changed week to week turns out it changes day to day but it still stands on how to solve that thing at the front of that room. Now, Metaro webcomic feature. Do you like cute webcomics? Of course you do. Check out these weekly panels from Japanese webcomic artist Metaro that detail her first journey into Destiny 2. Remember what it was like the first time you got your hands on the Gallenhorn? How about your first raid? Piecing together the story behind the Light of Darkness saga? Well, Metaro has put her Destiny 2 adventures into art form. You can catch her original work over on Twitter next in Japanese or read it translated into English below. Ah, oh, I like it, man. Oh, that's cute. Now, Destiny Content Vault updates. At the start of year seven of Destiny 2, on June the 4th, certain items will be deprecated from player inventories that correspond with vaulted activities and seasonal campaigns. They will then be moved into the Destiny Content Content vaults. We have updated the Destiny Content Vault article to reflect these changes and created a new article fully outlining items being deprecated at the start of year seven for players to reference. Now, other known issues. Capturing a zone in the collision PvP mode while having full super energy will slightly reduce super energy. Tormentors can push turrets away in Onslaught with their slam or grab attack. Yeah, it's kind of wild. They can actually push it away, but when you upgrade it, you have to go to the spot that it was originally at. Now, the zero death triumphs only unlocks when completing zero hour on the ledger difficulty, which should unlock on both normal and ledger difficulties. Now, as a final note here from Bundy this week, that's everything we have. Hopefully, you've been having fun on the new PvP maps. We know there's a lot to do in these final weeks before the final shape, but if you haven't checked the pvp maps out yet jump into the new territory playlist to give them a try not only are they beautiful and fun you can also earn the slightcation emblem by checking them out we'll be back next week with another twid and more details to share on the final shape in the meantime be good to each other and thanks for hanging out with us the destiny 2 community team well guys that is it that is our 12 for this week again apologies for being late i am flying back in literally right now as you're watching this we will be live tomorrow we have so much to discuss over the next few weeks so come join us over on our twitch Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.